Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In book two of his work on anger, particularly in one chapter, number 10, Seneca is going to consider errors and the fact that we tend to get angry at errors or mistakes when people go wrong, whether we think that it's deliberate in some sense or they were just being negligent and ignorant and foolish, we often do get angry with them. We have this response. And so he begins the chapter by saying that you should contemplate the thought is one way it's translated or just straight out think about kogitabis, and it's actually saying you, you will think about, right? And what is it that we should think about? What is it we should mull over? That we shouldn't get angry at errors. And you might say, well, why shouldn't we get angry at errors? People are making dumb mistakes that they should know better. Well, that may be, what, that may be true, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we ourselves have to get angry. And he's going to provide us with some you know, fuller thoughts here for, you might say, working ourselves out of the knee-jerk response of seeing somebody doing something wrong and then getting upset with it. And he's gonna give us a lot of examples as well before we look at his, his thought process. He says, what if you were to become angry at people unable to put one foot surely after another in the dark? So people are walking along and there's no street lights, there's no phones to illuminate anything, there's no flashlights or torches. They're just stumbling along. They, they don't know, right? And if they trip and fall, well, that's kind of to be expected. Or he says that deaf people who don't listen to orders, why would you expect a deaf person to listen to orders? Or at children because they don't pay attention to their duties, but look instead to their age mates games and silly jokes. What if you should choose to become angry at those who grow sick or old or tired? In all of these conditions, people are screwing up, but they, they're screwing up precisely because they don't know better or whatever it is that they could have done to prepare, they didn't do it, right? And this is extremely common in life. And Seneca is going to say, oh, this is the human condition. So, you know, don't think of yourself as this perfect person who never makes any mistakes. Instead, think about the way human beings are. And the things that he's saying, you know, two millennia ago are pretty true today. So he says um, a, a few things here. Among all those other disadvantages, incommoda is the Latin for that. Things that are, you know, getting in our way, things that are off-putting that are ours as mortals, as vulnerable creatures, right? There's this, he says, the murkiness, the caligo, there's sort of like fogginess, the shadowiness of our minds. And this leads to, he says, the inevitability of our mistakes. So, necessitas. Necessitas, you could translate as necessity, right? you may not screw up every single time, or you might not even screw up half the time or 90% of the time, but you are gonna screw up. Every human being is going to screw up because our minds are kind of a, a mess, right? So inevitability of our mistakes, there the, the term is errandi, right? A gerundive, uh, we're going to err, we're going to go astray. And then he says it also leads to a fondness or even love or desire for our 
errors. And there he uses erroribus, right? Uh, so, you know, the plural of errors. Not only do we inevitably make mistakes, we don't necessarily love the mistakes as such, but we love the paths that lead us there. And a little bit later, he's going to, you know, take this back up after giving us some more advice. He will say um, that being you know, human is, is a, a sort of excuse. These are the terms and stipulations of our birth. These, this is what you get by being a human being. We are creatures subject to no fewer diseases of mind than of body. And in a way, by being rational creatures, having a greater capacity for thought than the other animals, as far as we can tell, we have greater capacity to go astray, right? So he says... Uh, we're neither dull nor slow, but misusing our acuity. All of us offering each other examples of vices. Vices are, you know, bad uh, emotional reactions, bad habits. Uh, whenever anyone follows those who have gone before down the wrong route, how could they not have had an excuse since they've gone astray on the common highway, right? We human beings screw up a lot and we follow each other's stupid examples as well. So now here we get to, those are some considerations. Here we get to like what we could actually do. And Seneca suggests something actually quite extraordinary here. If we want to keep from anger at individual people, to not get angry at this particular person, this particular person, then one of the things that we can do is, he says, forgive everybody. Forgive the entire human race. Universis ignoscendum est is, is what he says. Now, ignoscendum is not exactly the same thing, or ignoscere, as parcare, to forgive, right, or to pardon. It more means something like not to pay attention to, to overlook, to deliberately... Um, put out of your mind what it is that people in general do. And he goes on and he says, you should grant a pardon to the human race. And the grant of pardon there is veni, venia tribuenda. So venia are, you know, little things where people do the wrong thing. We get the word venial from that when people make a distinction, you know, in religious terms between venial and mortal sins, right? Venial sins are the kinds of screw ups that we do all the time, like, you know, not tying my tie right or, uh, you know, forgetting somebody's name. <laughs> Can't uh, get on the tip of my tongue as I'm looking at him and I'm like, hey, you, <laughs> we've all done that sort of thing. So venia are these, these things that are very common. Tribuanda means uh, that we should grant these. We should overlook these. We should be okay with these. And we should do that to the entire human race. He's actually got a very interesting consideration. He's like, well, you know, we excuse children for things because children are stupid. They're underdeveloped. They're not mature, right? Well, we should grant that same sort of pardon to humanity in general. He says, being human is a greater excuse and a more just one than being a child. And so what we can do is, you know, realize that uh, the human race is screwed up. He says, what eliminates a wise man's anger? The great crowd of wrongdoers. He understands how unjust it is and how dangerous to be angry with a vice that is pandemic, that, that affects all of us, including the wise person. And he talks about uh, two wise people in particular from antiquity, uh, very distant from Seneca, you know, by hundreds and hundreds of years. And then he talks about the wise person in general and what they're going to do. And this is a typical Senecan theme, laughing versus crying. They're both emotional reactions to things. Laughing, he thinks, is better than crying. They're both, uh, in, in a certain sense, wise reactions, though. Uh, Heraclitus would go out in public. He says, whenever Heraclitus left his home and saw about him such a mass of people living badly, he wept. Wept for what? Out of pity for all the happy and prosperous people 
he met the behavior of a mind that was gentle but too weak. Besides, he himself was among those deserving of the tears. So, you know, this is a better response than the run of the mill, but it's still not the best response. What about Democritus? He says, Democritus was never without a smile in public. So hard did he find it to take seriously all the transactions being conducted in earnest. Where is the place for anger there, right? So these are two different options that we have if we want to pursue this. And Seneca does talk about these, these people elsewhere in his works. So he says, all things deserve either our laughter or our tears. Pity for those who are screwing up. Laughter at those who are screwing up. Not the, the laughter that's like, ah, ha, 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 you jackass, but just, you know, gentle laughter. So those are two options. And then he talks about what a wise person leaving their house is going to do. And you know, if you're familiar with Stoic uh, writings, you, you should probably see a connection here between this observation and Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, uh, book two, chapter one, where he says, in the morning when you wake up, you know, say to yourself, I'm gonna run into a bunch of jackasses, roughly paraphrasing there. So he says that the wise person, calm and even tempered in the face of error, right? is going to um, uh, not be an enemy of wrongdoers, but one who sets them straight, leaves his house daily with this thought in mind. I will encounter many people who are devoted to drink, many who are lustful, many who are ungrateful, many who are greedy, many who are driven by the demon of ambition. And he says, all such behaviors he will regard as kindly as a doctor does his own patients. A, a good doctor, right? Not a bad doctor, somebody who's just in it for the money or to have power over patients or criticize them. A good doctor will be like, oh, you poor thing. You know, if, you, if you'll help, let me, I'll help you out so you're not going to be so miserable. If you're not, well, then you're going to have to suffer, right? And so this is something that would be distinctive to the approach of the, the wise person as Seneca considers it. So, you know, one main source for us getting upset are these minor things that we call errors or mistakes or screwing up. And so, you know, if we can adopt the right attitude, Seneca says, if we can think the right thoughts, contemplate it, then we can avoid falling into anger, at least on those sorts of occasions.